Tomorrow, the ex-president, Donald Trump, will be arraigned in federal court in Washington, D.C. this time for federal crimes the Justice Department has charged him with in connection with his efforts to try to overturn his defeat in the 2020 presidential election. That arraignment is scheduled to take place around 4 p.m. Eastern and will be presided over by a magistrate judge. Trump is expected to appear in person, will very likely plead not guilty. The district court judge who will preside over the case is Tanya Chetkan, a former assistant public defender appointed by President Barack Obama. And this is not her first time dealing with ex-president Donald Trump. According to reporting in Politico, she ruled in the fall of 2021 that the House January 6th Select Committee could access reams of Trump's White House files. It was a ruling that was subsequently upheld by an appeals court and left undisturbed by the U.S. Supreme Court. That evidence, call logs, memos, internal strategy papers, and more from the desks of Trump's most trusted advisors became the backbone of the committee's evidence and shaped much of the public's understanding of his efforts to seize a second term he did not win. Joining our conversation, New York Times Washington correspondent Glenn Thrush, former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance is with us, and former Assistant U.S. Attorney Glenn Kirshner is with us. Glenn Thrush, I love when I have the two Glens. Um, Glenn Thrush, take me through our, our latest understanding of, of what exactly will happen tomorrow. Well, from our understanding, um, Trump will fly down from Bedminster, um, will arrive sometime before uh, this four o'clock uh, date. And it will be actually very similar to what happened in Miami. The question, and we haven't really been able to get this answered, is whether or not he'll even be subjected to the perfunctory electronic fingerprinting that was done on him in Miami. Uh, the government already now has his fingerprints on file. And as we were told in Miami, uh, they have plenty of pictures of him. Um, but, but the question then becomes, um, what will this magistrate do and what will be asked of this magistrate? Uh, interestingly, in Miami, uh, ma the magistrate judge Goodman um, decided to uh, throw a, a, a monkey wrench into this sort of agreement between the defense and prosecution over whether or not Trump would be able to communicate uh, with witnesses in the case who still worked in and around him on his protective detail, in his political operation, on his personal staff. Now we have these six unindicted co-conspirators, um, the vast majority of whom we, we know who they are. Um, so the question is, will, will the magistrate, as they have the right to do, um, question some of the provisions that, that will be part of the bond agreement? Because uh, there needs to be a bond agreement for the former president to leave the courthouse and have his liberty. Um, I think people should understand that. Um, so. The question is how how brief perfunctory will this be or will we have elements uh, uh, injected into this that we can't at the moment anticipate? Elements injected into it based on the pre-existing relationships with the six unindicted co-conspirators, Glenn, or, or sort of Trumpian flourishes or both? Yeah, I, I think I think what what the government will ask um, in, in terms of the conditions of bond, um, I think the uh, if we learned anything from the Florida experience, they kept the, they kept it fairly minimal. I suspect mm -hmm. it will be the same. But you know, as I learned last week from from covering a uh, a plea agreement in Delaware, um, <laughs> uh, a lot of this is in the hands of of the the presiding official. So let's turn to the presiding officials, the the, the judge who has this case. Um, Joyce is Judge Chuck in. She's dealt with Trump in the past. Um, a lot of the January 6th cases have come before her. What do we know about her, not to prejudge what she's done in the past, but, but, but what, what should we sort of go in eyes wide open understanding? Right. So she is an Obama appointee, Nicole, and it's important to remember that no one becomes a federal judge unless a president from one party or the other puts them in place. So I think we can set that aside and look to her, her background and her behavior on the bench. She's a highly esteemed judge. She had a lot of experience in private practice, but she also worked as a federal public defender. And so she's sensitive to the rights of criminal defendants in, in the way that some attorneys suggest that a former prosecutor might not be when they become federal judges. She has that um, very different sort of background. 
She also, though, has been a harsh sentencer in some of the January 6 rioter cases. In some cases, she's imposed sentences that are higher than the sentence that the government has asked for. She's been on, on the heavy end of these sentences. I'm unaware of any sentence she's imposed that has been successfully challenged on appeal. They've all been well within her discretion as a federal judge. Um, I, I think the one thing that's very interesting about her is she did consider this earlier case that you referred to. And she wrote in her opinion in that case that presidents are not kings. That seems to be such a vanilla statement, mm. something that's so self-evident that it's not remarkable. It is only remarkable in the context of uh, this former president. I think it's a wonderful baseline to go into this case with. She'll treat him fairly. She'll respect his rights. Her former defense um, lawyer background will inform that. But she will not treat him unfairly or give him more deference than he's entitled to just because he once occupied the Oval Office. It's such an important baseline, Glenn. I want to read this from Politico's reporting on her today. Trump's new judge is a tough January 6th sentencer and has a history with him. Chuck made her disgust and horror over the attack clear, lamenting the prospect of renewed political violence in 2024 and noting that no one accused of orchestrating the effort to subvert the election had been held accountable. Quote, you've made a very good point, she told January 6th rioter Robert Palmer at his December 2021 sentencing. Quote, that the people who exhorted you and encouraged you and rallied you to go and take action to fight have not been charged. Um, so someone very familiar with um, prosecutions of conspiracies, it sounds like. Yeah, um, and she's just stating the obvious, you know, none of the organizers, the funders, the orchestrators of the insurrection, the command structure, the hierarchy of the insurrection have been charged. She was stating the obvious. I do suspect it will probably inspire Donald Trump's defense team to perhaps challenge her, file a motion to recuse, which, in my opinion, will go nowhere. Um, I happen to know Tanya Chutkin when, from her days as a criminal defense attorney. She was a longtime public defender in uh, Washington, D.C., when I was an assistant U.S. attorney trying murder cases, and she and I had trials against one another. I would say she was a worthy adversary, but I probably should ask whether I was a worthy adversary to her, because she was one heck of a criminal defense attorney. She was smart. She was strong. She was um, relentless. I would say she was fearless. But I would also say that I enjoyed trying cases against her because she was honest and ethical and honorable. I don't always say, Nicole, that it was a pleasure trying a case against a particular defense attorney. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But I am a big fan of her work when she was a public defender in D.C. Um, I remain a fan of her work because I've had the opportunity to be in her courtroom in federal court, observing her presiding over criminal cases. I will say that before I retired from the Department of Justice, I didn't happen to have any case um, that she was assigned. Um, but I have been in her courtroom quite a bit. Um, she remains a fair, um, independent jurist who will give Donald Trump a fair trial. And importantly, I believe she will give Donald Trump a speedy trial. Frankly, I think she will give we the people and the country a speedy trial. You know, there's a phrase that we use when judges are uh, very tough. Uh, I will say Judge Chutkin don't play, and Donald Trump <laughs> probably ought not try to pull any shenanigans in Judge Chutkin's courtroom.